So in this first video looking at vectors we'll be focusing on drawing and writing vectors and working with column vector calculations. Now vectors are used to describe both direction and magnitude and this is very similar to translation so if you're not too sure about translation I definitely recommend that you watch the video on translation. And we can use column vectors to represent a geometric movement so basically what that means is you can use a column vector to direct uh, from going from one point to another. Now just a quick refresh with column vectors so that with a column vector it's like a vertical coordinate so the top number which we're going to call A represents the horizontal movement so this is basically telling you whether you're going left or right and it's quite similar to the X ordinate in a coordinate and B which is the bottom number uh, which you could th think about as being your Y ordinate and this represents the vertical movement so in other words your up down movement and again so if your top number is positive then that basically means you're going to the right and if your top number is negative it means you're going to the left and if it's zero it basically means that there's no movement so zero equals no movement and likewise for the bottom number if the bottom number is positive it means you're going up by that number of places if it's negative it means you're going down by that number of places and again zero means no movement and again this is nothing different to the translations and column vectors used in translation. So let's just have a quick refresh on describing the following vectors used in column vectors. So here we're not moving shapes like we were in translation, here we're just going from one point to another. Now the key thing I need to emphasize on this, and this is purely based on graphics, is the fact that typically when you're describing a vector the arrow, which is really really important because you need to know where you're starting from and where you're going from, is that sometimes the arrow you might find is in the middle. Now again the key thing to establish in the arrow, the purpose of the arrow, is basically looking at the direction of the arrow, this is basically your starting point and the end of that is going to be your finishing point. So like if I move on to B, so this because the arrow is going from left to right, this is my start and this point here is my finish and for C this point here is my start and this point here is my finish and that's really really important that you establish which is your starting point which is your end point. So with question A so here as you can see I've got to go left right first so with question A I'm not going left right at all so that's going to be zero and I'm going up four squares so that's positive four so we can just leave it as just normal four. With B again here I'm just going left right so I'm going right three squares so that's positive three and I'm making no movement up or down so that's just zero. For C, so here again I'm always starting left right first so I'm going right for three squares and I'm going up two squares so that's three two. For D, again I'm starting at this point here so I'm going left one place so that's minus one and I'm going up four squares and up means positive so it's plus three uh, four sorry it should be four like so and then moving on to E so again I'm going right two squares so that's a two positive two and I'm going up two squares so that's another positive two and again you don't have to write pluses when you're doing a positive just leave it as it is and with F, so here I'm going right two squares, so that's two, and I'm going up three squares. And then for G, here I'm going left one square, so that's minus one, and I'm going down two squares, so that's minus two. And again, put in square brackets. Now, you might find in some textbooks or worksheets, etc., you might have curved brackets. It doesn't really matter. We tend to use square brackets just so that it's, it stands out and it's completely different to coordinates. And then finally with H, again, I'm going left three squares, so that's minus three. And I'm going down three squares, so that's minus three again. So it's really important you understand that the first number, the top number, is always left-right movement. If it's positive, you're going to the right. If it's negative, you're going to the left. And the bottom number represents the vertical movement, so basically up-down. And if that's positive, you're going up. If you're going negative, it's going down. 
And the key thing, to another area where you can remember those things is by looking at a axis on a graph. So this is our first number, this is our second number, and you tend to find positive numbers on the right hand side, negative numbers on the left hand side, and positive numbers when you're going up, and negative numbers when you're going down. It says sometimes it's another way of remembering what positive and negative means. And obviously you just need to remember that the top number is the horizontal vert movement and the bottom number is the vertical movement. So the next thing we move on to is actually drawing the vectors. So here we're asked to draw them. Now when you've got this you can we've got squared paper as you can see because we're working with a grid. Now the starting point of this is entirely up to you but it's important that you at least establish what the starting point actually is. So I'm going to start with question one. So again, my starting point is going to be here. So here I'm going left, sorry, right two places and going up three places. So that's going to go there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line. And I should be using a ruler and that there is question one. For question two, so again here I'm going to find a starting point. So my starting point is going to be uh, here, let's say. So here I'm going to go right four places so that's going to end up being here and I'm going down one place so that ends up there so again using a ruler which you should be doing and again I'm going to draw number two like so then for number three so let's use a different color so here I'm going to go so if I just start with number three here I'm going left two places so that's there actually let's move across a bit because I've just realized I'm going to go into question two so number three let's start off here so I'm going left two places and then going down three places. So I'm going to end up here. So again, drawing my line going from my starting point to my negative point, to my starting end point. And again, I'm going in this direction. So the arrow is really, really important. And that there is number three. Then moving on to number four. So again here, number four, I have my starting point. Again, you could have your starting point here. If you're not too sure, always make sure you've got some squares. So here I'm going left three places, so that's left three places I'm here, and I'm not making any up down movement, so there is my final point. So again I'm going to join those two points with my arrow going from my starting position to my finishing position. Moving on to number five, uh, so let's go for orange. So number five, so I'm making, again starting my point here, so here's my start, and I'm going no left right movement but I'm going up two places so there's my finish and I'm going to join those points up with an arrow going like so and it's again if you didn't write the arrow you would lose a mark because it's really important that you do mark where you, from which point are you going to and from and then finally uh, let's just go different colors which one are we not going for we'll go for black so here with number six so just make sure I've got enough space so here I'm going so let's have a starting point here for number six. I'm going left four places, so I end up here, and I'm going up five, so one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to end up there. And again, what I'm going to do is draw a line like so with an arrow going from there because this here is my starting position, and here is my finishing position, and that there is number six. Now again I've not really showed a good uh, sort of a role model there by not using a ruler but obviously it's a bit difficult on this but I strongly recommend that you definitely do use a ruler because you might lose marks if you don't and also makes your work look a lot neater as well. So next we move on to is column vector calculations. So rather than working with vectors individually we can combine vectors together and the result of this gets us directly from a starting position to an endpoint both quickly and efficiently. Now an alternative uh, to drawing out vectors is to apply the instruction to the column vector. So for example, if we had A, and generally speaking now, this kind of introduces us to a bit of notation. Now when we're dealing, we can sort of label vectors with letters. And now this is not kind of combining algebra, and the reason why we're differentiating from using algebra, and that's why usually when a letter represents a vector, it's usually in bold or, and or it's underlined. So it's something to look out for. So it's best not to get confused with algebra because this is a standalone topic. So if I just quickly draw what A is, so A is going right two and up three. So this would represent an A. And that's A. And B represents going left three, uh, sorry, right three and up one. So 
If I use a different color, let's go for green. So B would be, if I start here, it's going across right three, up one. So this line here would represent a B. Now let's say I want to combine both A and B together. So if I have a starting point, let's say um, here, so this is my starting point. So the first thing I do is going to go A. Now A is going across right two and up three. So that's going to end up here. So that's my A. And then if I go B, B is going right three and up one. So that ends up here. So that's my B. This is my A. Now, if I was to add those two, so let's say I want to, now this here is my end point, And this here is my starting point. And what I've done is I've gone A plus B. Now, let's say I want to go directly from my start to my finish. So if I just draw a point like so, and this vector is A plus B. Let's have a look at what A plus B actually is. So A plus B is actually going to the right five places and up four places. So that's what this vector actually does. Now, is there a quicker way of doing this without drawing it? Well, yeah, because if you look at the top number, which is five, now A is two and B is three. Now, if I just simply added those two numbers together, I would get five. And if I repeated that process with the bottom numbers, so if I did 3 plus 1, I would get 4. And you can see how this vector is exactly the same as this vector here. So I didn't actually need to draw it in its whole entirety. So then moving on to, oh, I shouldn't have done that. We'll keep that. So if I then move on to a different kind of question, so let's look at 2b. So this here, what we're doing is we're multiplying the vector by 2. So I don't want 1b, I want to go twice. So again, having my starting position, which I'm just going to have as being here. So this here is my start. So for this, I'm going to go for 1b. Now b is going right three squares and up one square. So that's 1b. Oh, let's just do that again. And try and hit the mark this time. There we go. So that's 1b. And then if I do another b, like so, then this total distance is 2b. Now, if I look at the starting position and my end position, so for 2b, it's going to equal going to the right six squares and going up two squares. Now, if you think to yourself, well, is there a quicker way of doing this without me drawing it? Well, if I just get rid of all of this, you can see that if I just simply multiplied the top number by 2, and where does the 2 come from is from the question, and multiplied the bottom number by 2, you can see here that I actually get the same vector. So here all I need to do is just do whatever the actual scalar, or what we call, is telling me to do. Now likewise if we had a minus b, now this is where we start moving on to negative vectors. Now, a negative vector is basically going the opposite direction. So here what we're doing is we're starting with B. So if I have my starting point here, so I'm moving B, which is going up, uh, sorry, right three and up one. So there's positive B. Now minus A means I need to go in the opposite direction. Now A is telling me to go right two places. So instead I'm going to go left two places. And rather than going up, three places, I'm going to go down two places. So this point here is doing the opposite. So when you're doing the minus, it basically means you do the opposite. So here I'm taking away A. So that means then that this distance here from my start to my end, going in this direction, is B minus A. And that's basically what that there is. Now if I look at the column vector of my starting point to my end point, then all I need to do is go, well, right one place and down two places, so that's minus two. And that's what this vector here actually is. But if I actually worked out what a b minus a actually was, so here I've got three, one, take away two, three. Well, two take away, three take away two is one, and one take away three is minus two. So you can see 
how this vector is the exact same as this vector here. So when we're doing column vector calculations, all we need to do is do the calculation with both the top number and the bottom number with whatever you are adding, subtracting or multiplying it by. So let's have a look at some example questions. So here what we've got is if a is 2, 3, b is 4, 2 and c is minus 1, minus 4, without drawing find out what these are actually, what these calculations are. So for question 1, which I'll do in red, so here I'm going to do a plus b. So if I've got a which is 2, 3 and I'm adding because there's an add there and I've got b which is 4, 2. So when I'm adding all I need to do is add the top two numbers. So 2 plus 4 is 6 and 3 plus 2 is 5 and here I've got my final answer. Moving on to b, uh, so question 2. So here I've got minus b. So here what I need to do is now when there's no number you can just imagine it's minus 1. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do minus 1 times 4, 2. So minus 1 times 4 is minus 4 and minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. So when you've got a negative all you need to do is just simply change the sign and there is our final answer. With question 3, here we've got 3c. So we've got 3c. So 3c is going to be 3 lots of minus 1, minus 4. So if I do, let me just get rid of that 3c because it's a bit confusing. So here I'm going to do minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. And 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. So there is my final answer. Moving on to question 4. So question 4, I've got two A. So I've got two lots of A, which is 2, 3, plus C, which is minus 1, minus 4. Now if I do the 2 times first, so I've got 2 times 2 which is 4, 2 times 3 which is 6, and I'm going to plus minus 1 minus 4. Now 4 plus minus 1 is the same as 4 minus 1 which is 3, and 4 plus minus 4 is the same as 4 minus 6 which is 2, so your final answer is 3, 2. And then moving on to question four, uh, 5, sorry. so question 5 we've got b minus a, so b is 4, 2, minus a which is 2, 3, so again here I'm just going to do 4 minus 2 which is 2, 2 minus 3 which is minus 1 and that there is my final answer. And then moving on to question, and we've run out of colours, let's go back to red, so with question 6, so here I've got 3 lots, so I've got 2 lots of c which is minus 1, minus 4, plus a which is 2, 3, plus, or minus b, uh, which is 4, 2. So if I do the 2 times first, so 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, and I'm adding 2, 3, minus 4, 2. So working this out, I've got minus 2 plus 2 is 0, minus 4 is minus 4. And then working out the bottom numbers, I've got minus 8 plus 3 which is minus 5, minus 2 gives me minus 7. So the final answer for that then is minus 4 minus 7. And then finally for question 7, here I've got minus 2a, so I've got minus 2 times 2, 3. Well minus 2 times 2 is minus 4, and minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, and there is my final answer. So when you're dealing with column vector calculations, you kind of treat it exactly the same as when you're doing just general basic arithmetic. So if you're adding, you just add the top numbers together, and you do the same with the bottom numbers together. If you're multiplying, you multiply the bottom number with the number outside, and the bottom number by the number outside, etc., and go from there. Now the key thing to just be wary of is when you're dealing with negative numbers. So just be mindful when you're working with negatives, and remember the general rules of when you're adding, subtracting, and multiplying with negative numbers. And likewise, if you're multiplying a negative with a negative or adding a negative with another negative and go from there. So it's just general practice that you need to make sure that you are comfortable with dealing with negative numbers.